Let's take a look how we can create a turntable animation in DAS Studio. Hello everyone, I'm Jay and on this channel we're helping you become better 3D artists with DAS Studio. On today's episode I want to continue on from something we've discussed earlier, namely how to make a turntable animation of your favorite character in DAS Studio. This is what that looks like. Turntables are typically used by people who put something funky and cool together that they want to show off to their audience from all sides. And this is what a turntable does really well. And they're fairly simple to set up in DAS Studio, but you know, there's some tips and tricks that we need to know about. Let's get started. I've got Josie here again. We've met her in the previous episode. And the only thing I've done here is I've kept her animation going and I've added some light. So she's still breathing. She still has her expression. And I think I'm going to use the whole 150 frames that I have here. So that number came about because we've already talked about this in the previous episode. But if you didn't have that, if you just wanted to do something from a static character, then anywhere between 120 and 200 frames is a good starting point if you're doing this in 30 frames a second. So 150 is just going to work fine for our example. I've also set some lights here, JS Killer Lights, and just to have a look what that looks like in IRA, that's where I want to render it. Eventually, I'm going to go and switch over to IRA and just have a look what the light looks like. This is nice. I'm happy about this. So the lights, they essentially just, you know, give the figure some definition or some form, I believe photographers call it. And especially here, the white highlights, this is a nice separation that I'm looking for. I could have done something about the hair, but as an example, this is nice. I could make that brighter, darker. I'm just going to go and leave it as it is. I'm also going to frame up my character. Perhaps I don't want to see the white shot, or maybe I want to render out multiple versions, maybe one as a white shot and maybe one as a closer version, maybe one as a really close version. So I would render that in three passes. But maybe I'm going to use something like a mid shot like this. I'm going to go and create myself a camera for that because I want to literally duplicate what I'm seeing here in my perspective view. Let me go switch this eye ray off because I'm kind of happy about the light. And let's switch over to create new camera. I'm going to go and check copy active view, which is the perspective view. And that'll go and copy the properties that I had kind of dialed in here in the preview viewport into my camera. To prove a point, I can go and switch that over to camera and make some final adjustments, set some camera parameters and all that. Make sure you're on the first frame for this. So if your playhead is here and you make some adjustments like to the framing or whatever, and uh, then you move the playhead back to the first one, you can see that your camera is now moving and that is not what we want. But I've explained that already. I'm going to go control Z and undo that or just go and remove that keyframe that that studio is set here from the camera automatically. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to be on the first frame, set up my framing, make final adjustments. For example, center your character. Uh, that's here on the little context menu. If you switch aspect frame on, then you can see, well, I suppose Josie is kind of in the middle of my aspect frame. I'm rendering this as a square and this is set on the render settings tab up here under general. I've set this to custom or to square, but you know, you can render this as a landscape or portrait just as much. So the other thing that I like to do as a framing aid is I'd like to switch on the rule of thirds here. So show thirds guide will show that yes, indeed, my figure is indeed in the center. So that's nice. I'm just going to go and leave this on and worry about rotating the camera now. Perhaps I'm going to go and switch my viewport over to a side by side affair. So on the left hand side here, I'm going to go and see what my picture looks like framed up. And on the right hand side, I'm going to go and use my perspective view. So that means here I can move around and here I can see what the camera is doing. That's going to be really nice. So in order for us to rotate the camera around the character, there are several ways that we can do this. But technically what we want to achieve is to drag the camera around while also rotating this so that the figure keeps appearing in the center. And that is easiest done if we use a helper object like an empty. You might be thinking, hey, I could potentially go and use the constraint parameter here and then point that at the figure. That is also a possibility. So kudos if you were thinking that under hip. Perhaps if I just go point this at the figure, then it'll point at her feet. So that's not what we want. I'd probably have to go and open the spine, kind of spine four for this, point it that way. But then my framing isn't exactly where I have set it up. But if you then move the camera, you will see that in fact, it keeps pointing at my character. So, you know, keep that in mind if you wanted to 
do some animations and you wanted to always keep something in frame, you can use that. But in our case, once again, it's not what we're going to do. So I'm going to switch point add back to none because that's not what we want to do. What we'll do is create an empty helper object that's in the center of the scene. And then we're going to go and parent the camera to it. And then we'll just rotate that object. Let me show you what I mean. I'll head over to create new null. Null is the same principle as what Blender calls an empty object. We go and just call that null. That's cool. Or in fact, in the scene tab, I'm going to go and rename it into camera helper. And then I can go and grab my camera here, left click and drag it onto the camera helper object. And now I can animate not the camera, but the helper object. Ha ha, very clever. So it's like a controller in that respect. So if I go and select that under parameters, transforms and rotation, I'm gonna go and animate the Y rotate. So watch Josie in the viewport as I left click and drag that one slider. That creates a very smooth camera rotation now. And the camera, if you look at the other viewport, the camera literally just paints a circle around the character. That's perfect. Okay, so then on frame zero, this is what I would like my Y rotate to be at. So I'm gonna go set a keyframe. Then I will go, and this is with my camera helper object selected. I'll go and left click and drag all the way to the end of my animation. Or you can use that little end icon here. That is also possible. And here I'm gonna go and set the full rotation. So zero will eventually become zero since it's loopable. But for now, we need to type in 360. And you won't see a difference in the viewport because zero is 360 in this case. But of course, it'll now incrementally animate. Look at that. Perfect. So the figure stays almost in the middle, not exactly. So I want to make a small change to that because as we get to the exact opposite, so at frame 75, we get to the, uh, her back, basically. If I look closely, I can now see that my figure is no longer in the exact center of the three lines here. That's where the third guy was really helpful. So the figure, I think, could be moved to the right a little bit. And 75 is exactly the middle of my animation. So with my playhead park there, I'll go over to the translation values and adjust the X translate. Y is up and down, Z is forward and back, and the X translate should go left and right. There we go. So it's only a small adjustment that I'm going to make here, maybe to 10, something like that. This may or may not happen for you. This may also be more pronounced when you do it. But yeah, this is going to be a little bit nicer because when people watch it on social media, they really want to focus on the character and keep this, the character in the center. And look at that, because I didn't have a keyframe set on that, I need to do that manually as well. So now she's shifted to the left. So let's go and tweak the X translate to be zero at the beginning. I should have really set keyframe, shouldn't I? And of course, at the end, there we go. That's the same thing. Put it to zero. And now we'll see a nice interpolation. One of those things that you always have to look out for in animations. So this is going well. I think this is going to be a nice camera animation, but if we watch it go through, then watch what happens to my lights, especially in the other window here. So there's two things that I want to correct. So on one hand, my camera is now rotating. This is what I want. But the other issue that we have is that the lights don't rotate with the figure. And that may or may not be a problem for the lighting that you have. I find that when we get to Josie's back, her back is illuminated way too strong and I'm losing all the definition that I had so carefully put in when we started this. You know, remember the things that I pointed out, these little highlights so that we can see her shape. So those are gone and that's because the lights don't rotate with my camera helper. But it's no problem because we have a helper object. So on frame zero, I'm going to go and drag all my lights, which happen to be in a nice, neat group here. I'm going to go and drag them all into the camera helper object as well. So group that together with the camera. And now when I go and play this back, the lights and the camera rotate. And as a result, I keep this nice definition that I have here on Josie. And no matter where we're looking at her from, it, the light's always going to be great, which is nice. By the way, if you wanted her to rotate in the opposite direction, all you'd need to do is on the final keyframe here, on the last frame, instead of, that's on the camera helper object, instead of this being a value of 360, you just make that negative. So you can type in minus 360. 
and then Josie will rotate the other way around. So it's totally personal preference. There we go. She rotates the other way around. Totally personal preference, what you prefer. I think for this example, I'm going to go stick with what we had, namely the positive 360, but it's super easy to change. Just make sure you're on the camera helper object and on the last keyframe and then change that polarity, so to say. One last thing I'd like to correct, and again, this is just personal preference, is the speed of the rotation. So currently, or let's say the interpolation of the keyframes in this case, the animation starts slow, speeds up, and then it goes down in speed again. So that results in the rotation not being constant. It is, in fact, logarithmic. And if you once you see this rendered out, it's not going to look as great once you have something that's spinning indefinitely. This is done because the keyframes by default interpolate with a motion called TCB and this is now on the camera helper object here. We haven't really spoken about that but on every keyframe that you can select you can also right click and go and change the key interpolation. TCB is the default which means ease in and ease out. Then we have linear, which is a constant motion. This is kind of what we want. And then we also have something that is called constant, but that is literally a change from zero to one. So there's literally no interpolation. There's just a change from one value to another abruptly. So we want to change all our keyframes to linear. But for that, I have to go and select all keyframes for that to make the most sense. So I'm going to go and left click and drag a little marquee around all my camera helper keyframes like so. And then I can go and right click and choose set interpolation to linear. And now we will see this motion. I'm also going to show you something quickly in which you can check what interpolation have I set. If I go and open the keyframes that I have changed, namely general transforms. Remember the triangles are not keyframes under rotation. These things are now not circles their little diamond shaped things and they have an L in the middle. So just to show you this on the first keyframe, if I go and change this one over to TCB, then they're in fact round and the little T is in the middle. Or if I go and right click and change this to constant, they're going to have a little square around it. So we're going to use the linear one. Just wanted to show you where that is. The little diamond shaped ones are the linear ones. So now if I go and play my animation back, I can see that the camera no longer speeds up and slows down. It's in fact drawing a constant motion. And once we render that out, it's going to be really, really nice motion that will loop forever. And it'll look something like this once we render it out. That is in fact what we're going to be doing in the next episode. I'm going to show you how to render this out as an image sequence as well as a video because that's a bit of an involved process. So we're going to have a look at that in the next episode so that you can share your creations with friends, family and total strangers. Stay tuned for that.